My aunt, 41 years old, that I will call Karen, has been married to my uncle, 43 years old, for a little over a year. She had a daughter, 12 years old, that I will call Emily, from a previous relationship. And my uncle always treated her like his own daughter, even though he only came into her life when she was nine because she never really had a father figure growing up. When their relationship got serious, my uncle introduced both of them to our family, and ever since they have been present at most gatherings and family holidays. I never liked Karen, because she was always very demanding and would always force people around her to do what she wanted. She never had any respect for anyone, but that's another story. Just to give some examples, she would always show up late to events or just not come at all, and when I say late, I mean like 45 minutes to an hour late, even when people told her it was important to be on time and never apologized for it, she always asked other people to do things for her, like go get something, go to the shop, or just anything that she didn't want to do, and never took no for an answer, and that's just some of it. She has said multiple times that she expects to be treated like a princess. My family always found her impolite and disrespectful, but we didn't really say anything because my uncle seemed happy with her, so good for him. The real problem, however, was her daughter. I can't begin to explain all the disrespectful and entitled things that she has done, but I will try and list some of them. When she was first introduced to us, I was 20 years old and would normally sit at the adults' table. She, however, decided that it was unfair that I got to sit with the adults and she didn't, so she demanded that either she could sit with the adults or I came back to the children's table. Just to remind you, she was 10 years old at the time. Instead of explaining to her that I was an adult and she was a child and therefore we did not sit at the same table, my aunt told me to go with the children. When I said that I didn't want to, especially because children were between 7 and 14 and I was much older, she said that if I was so immature that I didn't want to switch tables, I didn't deserve to be at the adult's table. Ever since then, she made sure that I was seated with children. Her daughter would always ask me to go play with her, even when I was doing something else or working. And when I said no, she would throw tantrums. Her mother always yelled at me for making a child cry and not being a good cousin and forced me to go play with her. But when I went to play with her, Emily would only ask me do to things for her, like go make her a snack or dress her dolls for her and would throw a tantrum if I didn't. She would always steal my stuff, especially my makeup and clothes. When I told her not to, because one, she didn't ask for permission, and two, she was too young to use makeup. She once again threw fits, and her mother forced me to be generous. She ruined a lot of my stuff, and when I got mad, my aunt just said that she was just a child. For some reason, she was always very jealous of me. Everything I had and she wanted, she demanded I gave it to her. When I got my bachelor's degree, my family threw a party to congratulate me, but she got angry that she didn't have all the attention and a party for her. So my aunt threw the exact same party at the same place the next day. Every present I had, she would ask her mom for and eventually get. She would make every event about her, even my birthdays. I tried to let it slide and be patient with her. And I tried to tell myself that she was just a child, but her behavior didn't seem to change as she grew up. If anything, she was becoming even more entitled. My last straw was two days ago. We were celebrating my birthday. I was born at the beginning of May, but we waited until June to celebrate to make sure that we would have good weather, as we had planned to have a birthday party in my grandparents' garden. As soon as she arrived, which was approximately one hour late, Emily started complaining that we were celebrating my birthday one month after the real one. She claimed that if we were doing that, we could celebrate her birthday too, since she didn't really have one because it's close to Christmas. To clarify, her birthday is November 29th, which is still a month before Christmas. And her mother always made a point to throw her a real party and not just group it together with Christmas. Karen would always make a very big deal of it and we always bought her very nice gifts, but she conveniently forgot about that and complained for about 10 minutes before her mother gave in and asked my grandmother to go buy another cake and candles for Emily, as we would also be celebrating her birthday. Emily then complained that it wouldn't be a real birthday because she had no gifts, but Karen said that people had time to go buy her something, and that if there weren't any gifts for her, we could just share mine, as I had plenty. I was furious. I went into my grandmother's house and asked if she had any cardboard boxes that I could use. I took one and pretended to wrap it as a gift. 
Inside, I only put one thing, a note saying, congratulations on being such a spoiled brat. But don't worry, it's not your fault your entitled mother raised you that way. Hope you enjoy your present. Yes, it is immature, but I just had enough. She had ruined all of the most important moments of my life for the past three years, and I was so tired of it. When people sang happy birthday to me, Emily and Karen made sure to sing, happy birthday, dear Emily, instead of my name, loudly enough to cover all of the other people there. I was so angry, but I thought she wasn't going to be smiling that way for long. I was right. As soon as she opened my present, she started screaming and throwing a tantrum. When she saw what I had written, her mother started yelling at me, but I was just smiling at her the whole time. She called me many names and immediately left with Emily. My family members did not really react as no one really liked Karen or Emily. However, I have received plenty of texts from my aunt and uncle, and even some from other members of my family saying that I was a huge a-hole for ruining a little girl's birthday. I did not yet reply, because I don't really regret what I did, but I keep thinking that maybe I went too far. Am I the a-hole? Now, for a few comments before the update, comment one. So she bosses you around in your parents' letter? I think you need to have a serious talk with them. She should never have been so bold as to order a 20-year-old to sit with the children and then you obeyed her? Not the idiot for what you did, but you're the idiot for ever allowing it to get that way. Comment two. I don't understand how Karen was able to make you do any of these things. You are an adult, she isn't your parent, and you don't live together. Why not just exclude your uncle's whole family from your birthday party? You don't mention your parents at all in this. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So a lot has happened since my last update and things have definitely escalated. After the birthday fiasco, Karen and Emily didn't show up for any family gatherings for a few days, which was a relief. But then, last Friday, my uncle called a family meeting. He said it was important and that everyone needed to be there. I had a bad feeling about it, but I went anyway. When we all gathered, my uncle looked really stressed. He started by saying that Karen and Emily were very hurt by what happened at my birthday party. He said that Karen felt disrespected and that Emily was traumatized by the note I gave her. He then dropped the bombshell. Karen had given him an ultimatum. Either he cut ties with me and anyone else who supported what I did, or she would leave him and take Emily with her. I was shocked. I knew Karen was manipulative, but I didn't think she would go this far. My uncle was clearly torn. He loved Karen and Emily, but he also loved his family. He asked us what he should do. Most of the family was silent, but a few people spoke up, saying that Karen was toxic and that he should let her go. Others said that he should try to make it work for Emily's sake. I felt terrible. I never wanted to put my uncle in this position. I tried to apologize, but Karen had already made up her mind. She wasn't there, but she had sent a long text to my uncle, which he read out loud. In it, she accused me of being jealous of Emily and trying to sabotage their family. She said that if my uncle didn't cut me out of his life, she would leave and never come back. My uncle was crying by the end of it. He said he didn't know what to do. I felt so guilty. I knew I had to make a choice. I told my uncle that I would step back from the family for a while to give him time to sort things out. I said that I didn't want to be the reason his marriage fell apart. He tried to protest, but I insisted. I packed my things and left that night. The fallout was immediate. My phone blew up with messages from family members, some supporting my decision, others blaming me for everything. I felt like I was in a nightmare. I moved in with a friend for the time being, trying to give my uncle space. A few days later, I heard from my cousin that Karen had moved back in with my uncle. She had agreed to give him another chance, but only if he promised to keep me out of their lives. My uncle agreed, and they were trying to work things out. I felt a mix of relief and sadness. I was glad my uncle didn't lose his family, but I felt like I had lost mine. During this time, I had a lot of time to think about everything that had happened. I realized that Karen's behavior was a pattern. She had always been controlling and manipulative even before she met my uncle. I remembered a story my mom told me about Karen's first marriage. She had been just as demanding and controlling with her first husband, which eventually led to their divorce. It seemed like she hadn't changed at all. I also thought a lot about Emily. She was just a kid, but she had learned to be entitled and demanding from her mother. I felt sorry for her. She didn't have a chance to learn how to be respectful and considerate because Karen never taught her those values. 
I wondered if she would grow up to be just like her mother. As the days went by, I tried to focus on my own life. I started a new job and tried to keep busy, but I couldn't shake the feeling of guilt and sadness. I missed my family, especially my uncle. We had always been close, and it hurt to be cut off from him. One night, I got a call from my uncle. He sounded tired and defeated. He said that things with Karen were still rocky and that he missed me. He said he didn't know how much longer he could keep up the charade. I felt a pang of sadness for him. He was stuck in a toxic relationship, and there was nothing I could do to help him. I also thought about my own childhood. My parents had always been supportive and loving, but I remembered a time when my mom had to make a tough choice. She had a friend who was toxic and manipulative, much like Karen. My mom eventually cut ties with her for the sake of our family. It was a hard decision, but it was the right one. I realized that sometimes you have to make tough choices to protect yourself and the people you love. In the end, I decided to stay away from my family for a while longer. I needed time to heal and figure out my next steps. I hoped that my uncle would find the strength to make the right choice for himself and Emily. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I believed in him. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for cutting off my ex after he ignored my wishes and caused my anxiety attack? My now ex-boyfriend proposed four days ago. Let's call him Tim. Tim and I have been together for two years. We talked about marriage, we are both 26 and kids, etc. And until last week, I thought I had the perfect love life. Now Tim has his best friend Mimi. Tim also has a friend group he is very close to. The problem throughout our relationship was that Tim would place me last whenever his friends were involved. He missed a promotion dinner for my work because Mimi's dog was throwing up. He missed Diwali celebrations with my family because his friends wanted him to help paint their new house. Plus, some issues during his teenage years involving his friends resulted in his dad threatening to take away his inheritance and distribute it to relatives. For context, his dad introduced us. And until last year, before I left the company which I joined straight after college, his dad was my boss. I still see him as a father figure and respect him a lot. Now I have outright told Tim that I don't like public proposals. I am very introverted, and having eyes on me during a loving moment will only cause me anxiety. Tim said he understood and promised he wouldn't do one when he proposed. Another thing I told Tim was that Mimi treats me passive-aggressively because I'm kind of an anxious person, I have mild obsessive compulsive disorder and asked him to not involve her in our affairs. Tim said Mimi only wants the best for us. I kind of didn't press the issue after he got defensive. Thursday, after I entered my flat, I was greeted by all of Tim's friends, with Tim in a suit and a ring in hand. I kid you not, my flat was swarmed. There were people I didn't even know. Before Tim even said anything, Mimi chimed in and said, Chill OP, dear God, this is not the time to make that face. I saw red. I was having a severe anxiety attack as I don't do well with lots of people. I calmly told them that there would be no proposal and to get the hell out of my flat. They looked shocked, so I just left my flat with just my purse, called my best friend on the way, and told her to get them out, and just called a car service and sat in the car crying for two hours and went to my cabin I brought. I texted my parents so they wouldn't worry and told them to not take Tim's calls, switched off my phone, and stayed there. Luckily, I had enough cash to make a grocery run, and the cabin was used last month. I only switched my phone on when I was calling a car, and saw the barrage of calls and texts. I called Tim in the car, and he sounded defeated and kept apologizing and crying. I told him it was over. Turns out my best friend told his dad, who was so mad he told him that he would only get half his inheritance. I now feel that I reacted very badly and could have handled it with grace. I might have let my anxiety take over and overreacted and I cost him his money. Am I the idiot? To add, my ex-BF and I are both Indians. One of the reasons why Tim's dad likes me is that I am from the same culture, though I am not comfortable with this reasoning. I am a lawyer and make enough money to buy and maintain a flat and a cabin. Tim only has access to my flat. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Not the idiot. Why would Tim's dad take away half of his inheritance because of this botched proposal? You specifically told him that you did not want a public proposal and what did he do? I don't blame you for walking out of there, especially if it was triggering a panic attack. 
I think you dodged a bullet here. Comment two. Tim said Mimi only wants the best for us. Yes, when Tim says Mimi wants the best for us, it's true. Us being Tim and Mimi. Not the idiot. Good for you for knowing your worth and finally putting your foot down. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for following along. So after the whole proposal fiasco, I decided to stay at my cabin for a few more days to clear my head. I needed some time to think about everything that had happened and what my next steps should be. During this time, I got a call from my best friend who told me that Tim had been trying to reach out to her to get to me. She said he was a mess and kept apologizing for everything. I told her to tell him that I needed space and would reach out when I was ready. A couple of days later, I finally decided to go back to my flat. When I got there, I found a letter from Tim on my doorstep. In it, he apologized again and explained that he had been under a lot of pressure from his friends, especially Mimi, to make the proposal a big event. He admitted that he should have listened to me and respected my wishes. He also mentioned that his dad had cut his inheritance in half and that he was struggling to come to terms with it. I felt a mix of emotions reading the letter. On one hand, I was still hurt and angry about the proposal. On the other hand, I could see that Tim was genuinely sorry and was dealing with the consequences of his actions. I decided to meet him in person to talk things through. We met at a coffee shop a few days later. Tim looked exhausted and had clearly been through a lot. He apologized again and said he understood if I never wanted to see him again. He also mentioned that he had cut ties with Mimi and some of his other friends who had been a negative influence on him. He said he realized that he had been putting them before me and that he wanted to change. I told him that I appreciated his apology and that I could see he was trying to make things right. However, I also told him that I needed time to think about whether I could trust him again. We agreed to take a break and give each other some space. During this time, I started to reflect on our relationship and the issues we had faced. I realized that Tim's loyalty to his friends had always been a problem, and it wasn't something that could be fixed overnight. I also thought about my own feelings and whether I could move past what had happened. A week later, I got a call from Tim's dad. He wanted to meet with me to discuss the situation. We met at a park and he told me that he was disappointed in Tim's actions, but also felt that I had overreacted. He said that he still saw me as a part of the family and wanted to help us work things out. He also mentioned that he had spoken to Tim and believed that he was genuinely trying to change. I appreciated his support, but I also felt that it was important for me to make my own decision. I told him that I needed more time to think about everything and that I would reach out to Tim when I was ready. In the meantime, I decided to focus on my work and spend time with my friends and family. I needed to rebuild my confidence and figure out what I wanted for my future. I also started seeing a therapist to help me deal with my anxiety and work through my feelings about the proposal and my relationship with Tim. As I worked through my emotions, I started to realize that my feelings for Tim were still there but they were mixed with a lot of hurt and anger. I knew that if we were to get back together, it would take a lot of work and trust building on both sides. A few weeks later, I decided to reach out to Tim and see if we could meet again. We met at a park and had a long, honest conversation about our relationship and what had gone wrong. Tim admitted that he had been too focused on pleasing his friends and had neglected our relationship. He said he was willing to do whatever it took to make things right and prove that he could be a better partner. I told him that I appreciated his honesty and that I could see he was trying to change. However, I also told him that I needed to see consistent actions, not just words. We agreed to take things slow and see if we could rebuild our trust and relationship. As we started to spend more time together, I could see that Tim was making an effort to prioritize our relationship and be more considerate of my feelings. He was more attentive and supportive, and he made a point to include me in his plans and decisions. I also noticed that he was spending less time with Mimi and his other friends, who had been a negative influence. However, there were still moments when I felt unsure and anxious about our future. I knew that rebuilding trust would take time, and that we both needed to be patient and committed to making things work. I also knew that I needed to continue working on my own issues and not let my anxiety control my decisions. One day, Tim invited me to a family dinner at his parents' house. I was hesitant at first, but I decided to go and see how things would go. 
During the dinner, Tim's dad pulled me aside and told me that he was proud of the progress we were making and that he believed we could work things out. He also mentioned that he had decided to restore Tim's full inheritance as he could see that Tim was genuinely trying to change. I felt a mix of emotions hearing this. On one hand, I was happy that Tim's dad was supportive and believed in us. On the other hand, I knew that this decision would test Tim's true loyalties and whether he had really changed. As we left the dinner, I told Tim about my conversation with his dad and asked him how he felt about it. He said he was grateful for his dad's support, but also knew that he needed to prove himself to me and show that he could be a better partner. He said he was committed to making things work and that he wanted to build a future with me. I could see that Tim was sincere, but I also knew that actions speak louder than words. I decided to give him a chance and see if he could follow through on his promises. Only time will tell if we can truly rebuild our trust and relationship. But for now, I'm willing to take things one step at a time and see where it leads. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for breaking up with my girlfriend after she called the cops on me for opening up about my suicidal thoughts? I, 29 year old, have recently been having a tough time with life. Job is stressful, barely pays enough to cover the bills. You know, normal life stressors. I have not been handling it well and my mind has gone to some pretty dark places. I don't have any actual plans to hurt myself, but have experienced suicidal ideation. For those of you who don't know what that is, it is essentially reoccurring thoughts of unalived with no real plan to follow through. After trying to dig myself out of that hole and realizing I couldn't do it alone, I opened up to my girlfriend, 28 year old of four years about these thoughts. Big mistake. My girlfriend panicked. She knew I had no active plans to follow through on my thoughts, but the thought of potentially losing me was apparently too much to handle. After we talked, and at the time I thought it was a good, productive, and helpful conversation, I left to run to the store to get a snack for later. While I was gone, my girlfriend called the police. I returned home to see two cop cars in my driveway. They told me they were here to take me to the hospital. She evidently told my parents as well. I later found out they were surprised I was having these thoughts. But if I was, they agreed with the temporary hold. I didn't raise a fuss, but was not a happy camper. I went along. I was placed on a three-day hold in a rundown piece of trash psych ward in my county. I was so mad I refused to cooperate. I didn't speak to any of the doctors or nurses. Just sat in complete silence for three straight days. On the second day, my parents and girlfriend came to visit. I told the nurse I wasn't taking visitors and they were turned away. It was a shitty experience. One of the worst in my life. Being held in a room with a person who thought they were a literal god and would bash his head into a wall. Food was garbage. I had to take pills, and if I didn't, I was threatened with force. Doctors didn't have any evidence I was actually suicidal, so after three days, they had no choice but to release me. My girlfriend and parents were there to pick me up when I was released. They seemed happy to see me and asked all sorts of questions, mostly about how I was feeling. I didn't respond. I walked straight past them and walked home, three miles in the rain. When I got home, I told my girlfriend we were done. She had until the end of the week to pack her stuff and get out of my house. I told her I no longer trust or love her and never wanted to see her again. My parents berated me, saying that was too harsh and she was doing what she thought was best. I told them if they wanted to take her side, so be it. I would be done with them too. I blocked their numbers and told them if they stepped foot on my property, I would call the police for trespass. Oh, and on top of everything else, my insurance wouldn't cover my stay, so I'm now $10,000 even further in the hole. Am I the jerk for dumping my girlfriend and cutting off my parents? Now for an update. I was able to get my medical bill significantly reduced. I demanded an itemized bill from the hospital, which dropped my bill by about $3,000. I was sent to multiple different state agencies before finding one that could help reduce my bill even further and set up a payment plan. Parents tried to visit, but I didn't let them in. I just pretended I wasn't there, and they left after about five minutes. Haven't spoken to my ex, but a mutual friend said she wasn't doing all that well. To his knowledge, she hasn't left her parents since the breakup. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. What is your insurance company's reason for denying coverage? If it is an ACA-compliant plan, it should be covered. 
I am honestly surprised that you have already gotten billed and a determination of coverage in what sounds like a fairly recent incident, but definitely appeal the denial. You should also consider that while you think it should have been obvious to your girlfriend that you were not actively suicidal, it also was not obvious to whoever did your intake evaluation for the hold. Comment two, not the idiot. I don't think it was appropriate for her to call the police when you were not an actual danger to her or yourself. I do think you need help, but you were already making the first step yourself by opening up about your thoughts to your girlfriend. While your girlfriend is not a professional therapist, I think she should have strongly guided you to seek professional help instead of forcing it on you. No one gets the help they need unless they seek it themselves. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me. So after the whole ordeal with the hospital and breaking up with my girlfriend, things have been a bit of a mess. I've been trying to keep my head above water, but it's been tough. I've been working extra hours at my job to try and make up for the medical bills, but it's exhausting. I'm barely sleeping and when I do, it's not restful. I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Last Tuesday, something unexpected happened. I was at work trying to focus on a project when I got a call from my boss. He asked me to come to his office. I thought I was in trouble or something, but when I got there, he told me he'd noticed I'd been working a lot of overtime and wanted to check in on me. I didn't expect that at all. I ended up breaking down and telling him everything that had happened. To my surprise, he was really understanding. He even offered to give me some time off to get my head straight, but I told him I couldn't afford to take any time off. He said he'd see what he could do about getting me some extra help with my workload. That same night, I got a text from my ex. She said she wanted to talk. I didn't respond at first, but after thinking about it for a while, I decided to hear her out. We met up at a coffee shop the next day. She looked terrible, like she hadn't slept in days. She apologized for everything that happened and said she was just scared and didn't know what to do. She told me she still loved me and wanted to try and work things out. I told her I needed time to think about it. After that, I went home and just sat in my living room thinking. I realized I still had feelings for her, but I was also really hurt by what she did. I didn't know if I could trust her again. I ended up calling my best friend to talk it over. He's always been a good listener and he gave me some solid advice. He told me to take things slow and not rush into anything. A few days later, my parents showed up at my house again. This time, I decided to let them in. We had a long talk and they apologized for not understanding how I felt. They said they were just worried about me and didn't know how to help. I told them I needed space, but I appreciated their concern. It was a tough conversation, but I think it helped clear the air a bit. In the middle of all this, I got a call from the state agency that was helping with my medical bills. They told me they were able to reduce my bill even further, which was a huge relief. I still have to pay a lot, but it's more manageable now. I set up a payment plan and felt a bit of the weight lift off my shoulders. Then something unexpected happened at work. My boss called me into his office again and told me they were promoting me. I couldn't believe it. He said he'd been impressed with how I handled everything and thought I deserved it. The promotion came with a decent raise, which will help a lot with my bills. It felt like a small victory in the middle of all the chaos. I've been trying to take better care of myself too. I started going for runs in the morning to clear my head. It's been helping a bit, I'm still struggling, but I'm trying to take things one day at a time. As for my ex, we've been talking more. We're not back together, but we're trying to rebuild our friendship. It's been hard, but I think it's worth it. I still have a lot of mixed feelings, but I'm trying to be open to the possibility of forgiveness. One thing that's been on my mind a lot is my relationship with my parents. I've been thinking about my childhood and how they always tried to protect me, sometimes in ways that didn't make sense to me at the time. I think they were just doing their best, even if it didn't always feel that way. I'm trying to find a way to forgive them too. I've also been thinking about my own mental health and what I need to do to take care of myself. I've started seeing a therapist, which has been really helpful. It's been good to have someone to talk to who isn't involved in all the drama. I'm learning a lot about myself and trying to figure out how to move forward. There's still a lot to work through and I know it's not gonna be easy, but I'm trying to stay hopeful. I'm trying to focus on the small victories and take things one step at a time. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm trying to be open to whatever comes next. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too.
Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.